Hello, this is Justin from the Datamail project, and today we are going to set up a discussion list using a plugin called DataBridge. Um, I have already configured, installed, and set the cron job for DataBridge. So all we have to do now is actually um, fill in a couple things on this on the DataBridge list control panel to get up and running. Um, so that's what we're going to do right now. Um, the first thing we need to do is there's this big, huge, angry thing that says this plugin is currently disabled for this list. Um, how do you get this um, horrible thing off so we can start working? Um, the reason why there's this horrible thing is I don't want people to inadvertently make a discussion list um, without knowing that they're doing it and um, start sending me email um, without you know being you know, privy to the idea that they are. So this is just kind of like a safety check to make sure you really want to use this without, you know, you might actually um, change the permissions on the script inadvertently, didn't know you had the plugin going, wh whatever, it doesn't matter. So down here, there is a checkbox that says disable sending using this message, Dis uncheck it, and then just go down here and where it says save, save. All right, when the screen is refreshes, that huge, annoying, awful warning should be gone. All right. Now, the next thing we have to do is something called um, pop in the list email address. What the heck is the list email address? Is that my list owner email? No. Is it my bounce handler email? Uh, no, it's it's not that. Is it a subscriber's email? N no, it's, it's not that either. The list email address is the email address you want people to send to when they want to send to your entire list. Aha, easy enough. Um, it's probably going to be an email address that you're going to have to create anew. You probably don't want to use an email address that's already in use because it probably has other usages, probably by to send and receive someone's email. email. So we have to just go into our uh, hosting account control panel, go to the email section and create a new um, uh, email account. Um, Data Bridge right now only supports um, a POP3 email account. It doesn't support IMAP. And um, I know I get this question from somebody. It doesn't support um, like an email alias, so like a, a virtual email address. No, it doesn't. You'll need a email POP account. Um, so it's it's really simple. So I'm going to go back to my Bluehost control panel, and we just actually just set the cron job. So we're going to actually go back. Back to the beginning, and in this fine thing, I'm just going to write email. Your control panel might be different. You actually might not even have a control panel, but I'm going to do it using Bluehost's cPanel that it provides. Um, in the little search results, it has one called email accounts. Oh, we want this. So click on email accounts, and we can just make our list email. And we can make it actually anything we want. Um, I'm going to be super duper creative since I have a art degree and call it list at data demo, which is my domain. And for the password, I'm going to, actually I'm going to let, again, cPanel kind of generate it, because it makes awfully uh, obtuse uh, passwords. So I'm going to let it create the password, I'm going to copy it, file, uh, copy, and hit, yeah, I've copied that. And say use password. Great, and just create the account. And before I forget, I'm going to write that password down, because I cannot, for the life of me, remember it. Which is okay, because we don't have to remember it. Um, we just have to input this into Data Bridge and then kind of forget about it. So great. The next thing I want to do, since every single hosting account, hosting company, whatever, seems to like to uh, uh, make their email credentials different, in cPanel, I want you to go to that More button, and I want you to just, um, go to the little guy that says Configure Email Client. And it's going to give everything we need to fill out the form for Data Bridge. Great. So let's go back to Data Bridge. First thing it wants to know is the list email. Okay. Well, I just made that one. It's called list at data demo. Great. And it wants my POP3 server. Okay. I I don't have that offhand. Let's see if this page has it. Ah, oh, here it is. Incoming mail server. POP. And it's mail data demo com. Brilliant. So let's pop that in there. Okay. Now it wants a POP3 username. Okay. I don't, I don't have that on hand either, but maybe this. Oh, here it is. Mail server username. 
list at not a demo. Okay, cool. It's the same as the email address. Pop that in there, and there was a little space. I saw that. Okay. Um, pop three password. I know that that what that is because I um, copied that down. That crazy obtuse thing. Great. That's probably all you need. Um, if you're having trouble connecting, um, play around with the type. Um, if you really can't get it connected, um, uh, register a new user on the .mail support boards, and we'll we'll figure it out for you. All right, so I put my list email, my pop server, my pop three username, my pop three password. I'm all I'm all set. So let's go down again, all the way down to save changes right there. Save those up. No, no. Great. I think we're all set. Now in DataBridge, it's really easy to check if your um, all these settings are correct because DataBridge will be able to log into your POP3 server, see if there's any messages waiting, um, send them if we're supposed to. So let's do that. Right where it says save changes, underneath it says manually check and send waiting messages. Interesting. So I'm going to click on that. DataBridge is going to go to another screen to uh, you know, log into the POP server and see if there's any messages. So it gives you a little kind of a uh, running tab on what's going on. It said logging into. Succeeded. Okay, great. Looks like my information worked. It says there's no messages awaiting and it's disconnected. Well, that's fine. Great. So we have just successfully set up our list email. We can now, if we want to, send um, a discussion message. Um, before we do that, let's actually, um, by default, DataBridge is actually set up not to be a discussion um, list. It's actually just set to be in announce only. But as I kind of uh, skipped over, there is a lot of different things you can do with DataBridge. We're going to kind of start with this one. Under Discussion List Options, we're just going to click the one that says Make This List a Discussion List. Let's do that. That sounds very interesting. So I'm going to click on that and just hit Save Changes. Great. So now we have a full-on discussion list. Um, so I'm going to try, actually, I didn't um, confirm that I've entered the um, SMP, SMTP uh, credentials in my mail reader correctly, but let's just go for it. So if I actually go to my subscribers and hit view, I have subscribed to my, my own list. I, my email address is subscriber at datademo.com. So let's see if I can't then, let's go back to uh, DataBridge, send a message to the list email, which is list at datademo.com and see if I'm not successfully able to send a discussion message. So here we go. I'm going to create a new message. I'm going to, in the two, hit the list email address, which is just for me, list at datademo.com. And let's just send a test message. Hey, anyone else here? Just. And uh, fingers crossed, let's see if that sends. Big money, big money. Yes, it's sent. Oh, I'm pretty happy about myself. Um, and if we want, we can probably just wait a couple minutes for DataBridge to uh, check email addresses, make sure, you know, see if, see if any are waiting, and, you know, send them. Um, to expedite this very, uh, you know, very cooking show kind, we're just going to go back down there and hit manually check and save waiting messages. Stop. Great. DataBridge has refreshed to a different screen, and again it says it's trying to log into the POP3 server, and it succeeded. And there's one message waiting, and then it goes through all these different things to make sure the person who sent the message is okay. So first it goes, um, message is from me, subscriber at datademo.com. Um, I'm not the list owner. The list owner can always send a message to the mailing list, no matter if it's a discussion list or an, an, only an announce only list. Okay, there's no moderation. If you're wondering if DataBridge uh, uh, supported moderation, it kind of does. Um, oh, and then it says the discussion list support is enabled. Great, we have a discussion list. It knows about it. And then it says, hey, the message is from a current subscriber. Super fantastic. And said authorized senders list is disabled. If you're wondering, again, if there's a bunch of lists or a list of email addresses that always have permission to send to either an announce only or the discussion list, the answer is yes. Um, DataBridge also has a Spam Assassin support, so if your server is running Spam Assassin, you can see if someone is actually kind of spoofing an email address and trying to send spam. And if it doesn't, it stops it cold, which is cool. 
And then it just says, hey, it's been being delivered. And I said, you know, hey, and it says it's finished doing that job. And then what DataBridge does is make sure, double checks that it removes the email address from your um, POP3 account just so it doesn't try twice to send your message. Great. And it also saves your message in a mailbox just in case on the server. So that was a mouthful. If I go to my mail reader now that I just sent the message, I should receive it back. If I hit get mail, good money, there it is. Great, this message, cool. And you know, since I'm the you know the loneliest number here, I'm the only subscriber of my mail list. I can subscribe. I can reply to myself, and the two should be set to the list email address, which it is automatically. So I can just start a thread. Hey, I'm here. What's going on? Yeah, whatever. And then you know, start start a really strange kind of internal dialogue via discussion email. If I go back here and you know check out again using DataBridge, it should say it has another message, um, and it all checks through with all the checks, and then it sends it away. If we're lucky. Mm -hmm. Please. There it goes. Great. Probably just sent it actually once I begin. Let's check my email. Super fantastic, there's a reply. And uh, that's that's discussion lists and data mail. It's pretty simple stuff. Um, one last thing we'll check is see if, uh, we'll go to first the default page of data mail. We'll go to my list page, and we'll see if those messages have been um, archived, and they have. So there's the first one I sent, which is kinda cool. And then the second one is there, which is kinda cool. So there you go. And uh, DataML tries to do a little bit of formatting, so the, the original message is kind of grayed out and kind of like how your mail reader does it too. So that's, uh, that's it. That's a discussion that's using DataBridge for DataML. Um, I hope this was enlightening and how to use one of the harder to install plugins for uh, DataBridge, or DataMail. If you're having trouble, um, again, uh, check out the DataMail support site, check out the documentation for DataBridge. Some of the the configuration might be a little different for for your hosting account. If you really run into trouble, by all means, register for a new user on our message boards and uh, start a new thread there. And we'll uh, try to help you out. Oh, actually, if you want, and you're more on the technical side, um, DataMail itself has a discussion list called the Data Dev Discussion List. Right there. If you want, you can use this form to subscribe, and you'll get um, the first, you know, anytime there's um, thinking about a change for DataMail, I talk about it on the developer list, try to get feedback, things like that. So it's, uh, DataBridge is something that I really like using myself and use a lot. So it, it tends to actually be a really well put together plugin. Okay, I've said too much already. Um, hope you enjoyed this screencast, and I'll see you on the next one.